Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Field with Stream. It's a 5x10 and I painted it last week. The thing about this painting is, um, <clears throat> well, a couple things. I have painted the basic scene before, maybe more than once. I'm sorry for the sniffle. Um, what sticks in my mind is the version I did, uh, and I probably I still have that painting around somewhere. Uh, I did a version of this scene as like a 12 by 18 back in like 2011, and there were some good things about that painting. Uh, the interesting thing is that I uh, the scene is basically on the way to a gallery where I have my work and so uh, this scene I drive by it uh, all the time it looks very different now than it did uh, <laughs> 11 12 years ago you know it's 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 sort of the same but sort of different and uh, anyway that's interesting so I am right now painting with the uh, burn number and uh, decided I was gonna do this one with burn number uh, as a start instead of the black and uh, I've been doing that on a, a few paintings lately and I'm liking it it's nice um, you know you can get pretty dark with burn number and the burn number is definitely very uh, you know goes I, I want to say complimentary with the uh, um, hardboard but I don't mean as in complimentary as an opposite sort of color I mean it like it it's it you know it's it's a lovely tone on the um, hardboard and I really enjoy painting on hardboard now the hardboard's been uh, prepped with two coats of clear uh, gesso I use uh, I think it's Liquitex yep good stuff I always put two coats down too nice uh, and then I like to sand in between and lately I've been into painting on the smooth boards and I had some requests to talk more about that I'm trying to think well things I have to say about it, it it's a bit uh, on the abstract side for one you are going to have a very different um, approach to painting uh, that's going to change with each surface that you're painting on <clears throat> you can't paint the same way on canvas as you paint on a smooth board and uh, if the board's just lightly textured that doesn't change things too much but as the texture level increases on the board you're gonna have to definitely modify the way you lay down strokes just because um, a good portion of what you're gonna need to do is, is power that paint into these little nooks and crannies right well it's not as big a factor on the canvas of course but I think with canvas a lot of times people um, depending on the weave like I personally, I like the uh, the look and feel of linen. Um, I really dislike the uh, quality of the cheap cotton uh, canvas that, uh, you know, you see these pre-stretched canvases in every every dollar store out here, every, uh, you know, every, uh, in the office supply store, the art supply section will have plenty of these uh, cheaply uh, stretched <coughs> and uh, cotton canvas and you know eh, whatever I don't need to diss it if you like painting on cotton go ahead paint on cotton I do think it leads like kind of a gives your work a little bit of a mm, cheaper feeling uh, not the case with linen of course but uh, linen wow that's pricey uh, I think I've come up with a great solution with the hardboard uh, because it's pretty tough it stands up to some moisture um, you know, the only, like, if you, if you drop it, it, it rounds out the corner, but other than that, usually they don't split or, or, um, they don't particularly warp either. I, the boards can have a bit of intrinsic war, uh, warpness to them sometimes, depending on how big, but it's not much to worry about. You basically pop it to a frame and you're done, you know. Um, anyway, getting back into smooth versus texture. So there's that. You have to um, power the paint into certain areas, you know, with the texture. Um, but uh, the uh, the plus side, I mean, I think powering paint into the nooks is, you know, not something you really want to do because it 
you have to do it, but you know, it takes away from the immediacy of the gestural, um, you know, sort of strokes that you're making, uh, which all build up to the overall emotive impact of the painting, right? But it's not that big a deal. You just, you know, adjust. It's mi micro adjustments as you're working. I'm going to sniffle again. Hold on. <laughs> I tried to protect you from it. I tried. Um, now, so the smooth, uh, but well, on the plus side, you know, you say you've got these e edges are so much easier on the textured surface because they're already kind of pre broke up. And a lot of times you'll see how when I fill things in with the. Um, on the smooth and this is a very smooth board we're painting on today um, I will leave like kind of a grabby sort of brushy uh, edge on things and which I will come and meet with another color so one thing you definitely want to avoid is running your brush alongside the contour of the uh, you know the object that you're uh, uh, painting right because that just creates a hard edge uh, that you're going to have to manipulate and maneuver um, and that's also less of a factor on the texture because the texture will automatically break up the sort of strokes yeah I find on the uh, smooth boards I tend to go a bit thinner um, unless I'm, ha I'm really making a point to paint thickly I, I have done that in the past I have painted more thickly and 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 for me it's always I always have to make a point to do it well you can see I'm going in with the black now and you thought it was dark before but well look how much darker the black is you know that's actually been working good I'm thinking that I'm probably going to be working that way for a little while now I have been um, doing my underpaintings with black for quite a while but um, I'm interested in doing it with the burn number now a um, couple reasons. One, the burn number is going to dry really fast. So, if I just want to lay down a underpainting um, when I have a, a spare hour or so, um, and then come back later, it's I could come back later. That later could be two or three days away, and I know it'll be dry. Whereas with the black, yeah, you need a week and a half or so. Yeah. Um, I want to point out that in the reference, you don't have the, the advantage of seeing the reference, but um, there was a lot of oddness, a lot of things like, first of all, I, um, you have, we have these main set of trees on our uh, right, and then another set of trees on the left, and then there's that bit in the middle. And in the finished painting, I think I pulled it off okay. Uh, it's the kind of thing I might want to come in and do a little scumbling or or something. I'm probably not going to. I'm just going to leave the painting alone. But um, I made a point to push that back in the distance. And there was, so that was one thing that wasn't necessarily resolved. I did a little work in Photoshop right before starting the painting to kind of plant that further back just with a, on a layer, you know, I kind of picked a creamy color and, 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 and painted roughly over the area and then turned on the transparency to sort of introduce some a, a haze. Um, but, you know, I could have just remembered that I wanted to do that as well. Um, in, the, in the past, uh, where I've really failed with those sorts of things is like uh, in the photo, the, they'll be just as black as anything up close. Um, and I would just paint them that way. And um, even a lot of times knowing I want to knock things back I don't feel like I can knock them back as far as I could that's you know basically called aerial perspective how things become you know more faded and lighter as they recede into the distance and it's always good to introduce some of that um, if you want to get a bit of distance and depth in the painting the other things like this reference was sitting in my reference folder for a long time and then every now and again I think about how can I do this, you know, to make it, uh, and, and that a lot of times will be because I'm seeing things that I think compositionally aren't amazing, and um, actually, that's something else I wanted to maybe talk about, so, in the original photo I took out in um, Nature, um, there was a road there, a pavement road, I've replaced it with a stream, 
Um, and you can see the stream's a little off to the side, and that's just where I had to put it to cover the road. However, it would have been much better if it was a little more in the middle, you know? And, um, so last night I'm collecting, uh, every now and again I gotta go start collecting reference for streams, paths, usually in a field. I have plenty of photos of uh, paths through the woods and things like that, but, um, you know, if you just have a plain old field or there's a, a nasty uh, pavement road in it or something else like that, you want to swap it out. Um, but what I was noting is that there's an interior dialogue as I'm looking at, the, you know, uh, I go to some place, uh, well, I won't mention any places I go, but they start with an F and end with an R and they've been around for 20 years. And, uh, that's one place I like to go looking for uh, reference and um, or reference elements I should say because I usually take my own reference photos uh, and I just augment them with little bits like a stream maybe from here or a sky from there um, anyway uh, you really do notice that there's a, a million, I don't want to say a million, but you know, a lot of things, most things you'll just say, no, no, that won't work. I don't want to do that uh, because I've done it before and it didn't look great. And that would be a lot of this little path coming in from the side, little stream coming in from the side. I think this is, it works fine in this painting. It's okay. Um, it is what it is, but um, especially even looking at it now, if I may have managed to somehow maybe push that over a little further, and I believe I did do some work in that regard, but if I'd gone even a little further with it, um, it would have been uh, better. Yeah, and so I noticed as I was uh, deciding which uh, path and stream reference I might want to collect and use uh, in future paintings, um, that I was definitely not not selecting things with roads and streams and stuff coming off way off to the side of the picture plane you want these things should be a little bit more in the center generally to work well uh, I think I pulled it off in this painting and actually I'm real proud of this painting because there are so many things in the reference image um, that were just not going to add up um, and I pulled off a lot um, I improved it a lot changed a lot um, and uh, the end result is a pretty decent little painting and which I'm happy more than happy to share with you today uh, really appreciate the the lovely comments I've been getting lately on the channel <clears throat> I've been a little more sporadic but you, know, you have ebbs and flows uh, you know and the thing is with my ebbs and flows is I'm always finding a way to work uh, even in, at times when you know, maybe not feel that motivated <clears throat> I think it's important to still do something and keep the momentum going because you may know uh, that well I'm not going to be uh, I'm not going to be hitting a masterpiece today uh, but you can get something done and you can get um, you can just keep improving you can keep uh, working and it's a process it's not really about any individual painting not, not to me I am always most interested in the next painting I'm going to do, or um, some, I actually tend to be quite interested in ones I've just done, you know. But give them a days, weeks, whatever. I moved on. I'm on to the next thing. Um, so, and I don't try not to get hung up on <clears throat> too much on the the successes or the failures, you know. Um, but if there are times when you're maybe not feeling super, super motivated. Um, that might be a good time to start uh, be setting up reference images, uh, doing board prep. Um, if you do paintings, you can do quick small ones instead of trying to go for that huge masterpiece, you know, things like that. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully the levels are okay on this microphone. It looks like I might be clipping a little here and there, so I may have to adjust that. It's a new little headset, and we'll have to see how it sounds. I'm hoping it'll sound 
uh, quite nice for you. Um, if not, we will make it better next time. Just like the paintings, right? Anyway, until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Try and be patient with people in this uh, sort of crazy world we're having right now. And uh, take good care. Stay out of trouble.